Welcome back, folks. All right, let's uh, finish off percent concentrate, or pardon me, concentration uh, calculations here with the most important one, which is molar concentration, otherwise referred to as amount concentration. Remember, when we use the term amount, we are talking about a mole quantity. All right, so this is the amount of solute measured in moles. Now, again, we remember from Chem 10 that moles are not something we can get directly. We measure volumes, we measure gases, we measure masses, we do all sorts of different things and we usually have to convert to moles. Now another thing to be careful of here is the units. Since this is the functional number one most popular way to describe concentration in a chemistry class, moles per liter is of course the set of fractional units that we would use, but since we use this so much, chemists often look for shortcuts. And so sometimes it is given as just capital M. All right, so we might have 1.0 moles per liter or 1.0 M, which would refer to moles per liter, or something we'll see a lot of in chemistry 30. And also this unit here is the use of square brackets. The square bracket also means moles per liter for us in chemistry. Okay, so be mindful of the variety of ways that we can express this particular number. All right, let's get right into the examples here. If uh, I take a look at a similar question to one we just did, here's two grams of copper, sul uh, copper two sulfate dissolved in water to make a 500 mil solution. What is the molar concentration now? Well, again, it's still the same starting point. The only issue we have here is units. So 2.00 grams of my solute in 500 mils of my solvent. Well, I just need to get this into moles per liter. It doesn't matter how you start. If we deal with our volume first, well, that's pretty easy. Mills will go up top, liters on the bottom, which is the bigger volume, obviously the one liter. And so there are 1,000 mills in every one liter. Milliliters go and you're in grams per liter. You're halfway there. Now I have to try and get into moles. Do you guys remember what the conversion is between grams and moles? Bingo, it is grams per mole or molar mass. So grams would have to go on the bottom here, moles up top, so we are flipping our molar mass. And for every one mole, we have to figure out the grams of our solute, the copper two sulfate. So we go to our data table and we find out the mass of the single copper is uh, what is it? 63.55, sulfur 3207, we have four oxygens at 16 each. So when we total this all up, we find out that one crystal of copper 2 sulfate, or pardon me, one mole of copper 2 sulfate would be 159.62 grams. Grams now cancel, look at your units, you were in moles per liter, that is a molar concentration. Make sure that goes through your calculator the right way and you get 0. 0.02505 moles per liter on your calculator. So we need to correct the sig digs. You had three there, three there. Leading zeros don't count. There's your three, the five rounds up. So my answer here would be 0. 0.0251. And I could use capital M to describe that as well as moles per liter. All right, on to the next one. I have five grams of sodium chloride dissolved in water to make a 100 mil solution. Calculate the molar concentration and the percent weight by volume. I'm just gonna do the molar concentration for this one because that's what we're focusing on here with at-home learning. So again, the starting point is exactly the same as you know. We have 5.0 grams. We have 100 mils. Okay, so we'll convert that. Again, if you can do these conversions in your head, you can go straight to them. All right, I'm just showing everything. There's your mils, there's your liters. I have 1,000 mils for every one liter. Now I have grams per liter. Use my molar mass, there's grams, there's moles, so that grams can cancel. And one mole of my solute of sodium chloride should be 58.44 grams. Grams now cancel. There's your moles over your liters. You run it through your calculator and kicks out a small number, 0.85557 moles per liter. This one, you've got a two-digit limit, 
when you look at the numbers, so there's 0.85, this rounds up, and so you might describe this as 0.86 square brackets, meaning moles per liter. All right, hopefully those two make some sense. All right, the rest is just looking at a bunch of different examples. All right, for the percent weight by volume, I'm just going to do the first one of each of these as we go through so we can get this done in one video. I will put the answers in for the others so you can try those. But here we have a 5% weight by volume. Well, remember, this means... Uh, we have milligram masses for, or pardon me, gram masses for our weights, and we have milliliter uh, units for our volumes. So we can actually just translate this into 5 grams per 100 mils. Just remember what percentage weight by volume is when we take a look at expressing it as a fraction. This is stuff you guys were doing back in grade 3 when you were learning what percent was. Okay, so now we have that, 5 grams per milliliter. We're trying to find the mass. Well, grams is in the right spot. That's fantastic. We just have to cancel out the mils. Think about it. It's kind of just a ratio. If I have 5 grams for every 100 mils of solution, how many grams should I have if I have 5 times the amount of solution? Well, cancel out your units. There's your 500 mils all over 1. Mils cancel. You're left with just grams, which is what you want. And so you get 25.0 grams of solute in this particular problem. All right, number four is just the same. You're just going to solve for volume, so be mindful of where your units are. But uh, for those that are trying it, it should be 224 mils of solution. Here we go to number five. This one is asking us to find chemical amount. Well, remember, chemical amount is measured in moles. So we have a molar concentration of 0 0.10 moles per liter. We have a solution volume of 2.5 liters. So let's see if we can't just figure this one out. All right, so if we take a look at it, we have moles given in our molar concentration. So why don't I start with that? 0 0.10 moles for every one liter of solution. If I want to count, uh, solve for moles, I just need to cancel out my liters. Liters on the bottom means that my 2.50 liter solution volume should just go in the top of the next fraction so it can cancel and lo and behold we end up with 0 0.25 moles of total solute. Two sigma answer so we just match that there should be straightforward tell you what I'll do number six for you since we're just kind of blasting through these here alright we're looking for volume from a 0.15 molar hydrochloric acid solution. What would uh, volume of solution would contain three times the amount of hydrochloric acid? Some of you guys are doing this in your head right now and already getting to that number, but let's prove it. So remember, 0.15 M stands for moles per liter. We're looking for liters. So I'm going to flip my fraction here, as you guys remember, we can do this in uh, factor label method so that I can solve for the correct thing. I usually want to solve for the numerator. That means I just have to cancel out my moles. There you go. I'm just left with liters. So 0.45 divided by 0.15 equals 3, but I have a two-digit limit, so I correct my calculator to 0 0.30 liters of solution or solvent necessary. Now the last ones get into just a little bit more um, of your unit analysis, but it's all again the same thing. We're just trying to solve for a particular value and you will be able to deduce a starting point. Okay, what mass of sodium chloride is needed to make 250 mils of a 0.25 molar solution? All right, we'll talk about this in solution prep in 5.4, but mass is measured in grams usually. Okay, so what relates to grams when you take a look at your two starting points? Is it 250 mils of solvent, or is it the 0.25 moles over liters that you see for your solution concentration? Remember, moles and mass are related through molar mass, so this becomes a great starting point. 
So I'll start with 0 0.25 moles over liters. And now I'm just trying to get to grams. So I can turn this into grams using my molar mass of NaCl, which we used on a previous page. All right, NaCl is 58.44 grams for every one mole. Now I'm in grams per liter. I just have to cancel out my liters. 250 mils is 0 0.250 liters of solution there. I just did the conversion in my head. And now I have these three numbers to uh, run into my calculator and I get 3.6525 grams of solute needed to make the solution as described. Two digit limit, there we go, that rounds up. So 3.7 grams is what we would measure out in lab. All right, same kind of idea for number eight. Let you try it. The answer, if you're working through it, is 114 mils. Okay, and so this brings us to the end of lesson one for 5.3. We have another thing to look at here. Take a look at page 203 to 210. Try some of the examples when you take a look at them. All right, it gives you more descriptions as to what I was doing. And then try a variety of questions concentrating on moles per liter and amount concentration problems, but know that you will see a couple of percentage and part per million questions on your quiz. Most of your concentration calculation questions on the quiz will be moles per liter. Okay, there you go. Next video, lesson two, we'll just take a look at combining this idea with the balanced dissociation and ionization equations so we can predict relative amounts. This will feel a little bit like pre or baby stoic, similar to what we were doing with Avogadro's Law in Gas Laws.